Hi! For this video, we're going to talk about the four ways of representing organic compounds. Now, in the previous video, we learned about the different characteristics of organic compounds and we defined what organic chemistry is, the scope of organic chemistry, and then we discussed a little bit of the chemistry of carbon. Now, we go into the details. So, since we have organic compounds, we know what they are. They're mostly made up of hydrocarbons. And so, how do we draw their structures? And we know that hydrocarbons or organic compounds are capable of branching out and they're capable of forming cyclic structures and even really long chains continuous chains of hydrocarbons so how do we represent them so there are four ways that you'll be learning today the first is through a chemical formula you know that that's a basic the identity of compounds are represented by the chemical formula in which the chemical formula or molecular formula will give us the number of each element in the compound so you see that if you see a number in the subscript or if there's no number at all it means one so like ch4 that means there's one carbon and four hydrogen and then c2h6 that means you have two carbons and then six hydrogens and so on and so forth so it's basically give the molecular formula will just give us an idea as to how many um, of that particular element is present in that particular compound. When we go to condensed structural formula, we're making it detailed a bit. So we're grouping our carbon-hydrogen um, segment according to how they're bonded. So CH4 is just CH4 because that's just one carbon. But as we go along, if we have like C2H6, and that means we can separate that into two carbons, which is C and a C, and the H6 can be distributed into three and a three because carbon has to have four bonds all in all to be able to comply with the octet rule. So that means C2H6 in the chemical formula can further be specifically represented in a condensed structural formula through CH3CH3. And C3H8, again, to follow the octet, that can be distributed into three segments, CH3, CH2, CH3. C4H8 will become CH3, CH2, CH, and then double bond CH2 because we need to stick to the actual number of hydrogen, which is 8, and then we also still follow the octet rule. That means the reduction of hydrogen would mean that there's the presence of a double or a triple bond. In this case, it's a double bond, and so on and so forth. And when we become more specific from the condensed structural formula, we now draw what we call the Lewis st structural formula or just plainly the structural formula, or some books will call it expanded structural formula, in which this time each segment for CH bonding, you now expand it by drawing a line from the carbon to the H. So you see here, sorry, you see here that for carbon to for hydrogen, you see lines connected from the carbon going to H. So that's expanding. And CH3, CH3, the H3 for each carbon has now been expanded through a line. So you see lines on top, bottom, and left. Same thing with the CH3 on the right side. Same thing with CH3, CH2, CH3. Now take note, the three carbons have to be connected because this is one compound. So the middle carbon has already two connections, left and right. That means you need to supply two more hydrogen for the middle carbon to make to follow the octet rule because carbon should always have to have four bonds only then for this for the one with the double bond it's obvious that your ch here because it's a double bond that means this carbon already has three one on the left two on the right so that means you just need to supply one hydrogen and of course the ending carbon already has two on the left so you just provide two more hydrogen in the case of C6H6, because there's no other way to distribute six carbon with just six hydrogen, this is an example of a cyclic structure, which is an aromatic hydrocarbon. Aromatic because you form a hexagon in which in, a, in that hexagon structure, because it has six carbon, so hexagon, the double bond has to alternate. So as to be able to generate or to be able to supply six hydrogen only because each carbon would mean 
that because of the alternating double bond, each carbon will have three bonds existing in the cyclic structure. So that means you just need to add one more hydrogen. So that makes it your C6H6. And the last representation is what we call the line structure. This is what I call the minimalistic way of representing our organic compounds. So if it's just one carbon, there's no line structure for that because it's just one. The minimum for a line structure is two carbons. So for CH3, CH3, that's plainly one horizontal line. Now remember, if you have a line structure, each tip represents your carbon, but it's not written. So if nothing is written, it means carbon for each tip, for each point. So a line has two points. That means this line mean two carbons. So that means when you go backwards, the two carbons has to have three hydrogen each. So hydrogen is not represented in the line, only carbon. And so automatically, you'll be the one to supply the necessary amount of hydrogen so that carbon can complete its four bonds. So in this case, one single line, that means one single bond, that means each carbon has to be supplied with three more hydrogen. So for these three carbons, that means you draw it not as a straight line because you have to make the three carbons clear. How do we make it clear? By making like a hill. So a hill will give us a point of intersection between two lines. And that intersection, that point is equivalent to one carbon also. That is, it doesn't mean that when you draw the structural formula, you have to also make a hill. No, the hill in the line structure is just an indication that you have another carbon in that structure just to segregate one carbon to the other. Because if you have one continuous line, you cannot distinguish that that is three carbons. So the way to do that is you make a slope or you make a hill, a pointed line. So in this case, do you have three points? One, two, and three. So that means you have three carbons, which lead us to this structure. The C4H8, so that means you already have four points because that's four carbons. So this is one, two, three, and then four. That's four carbon. But how do we represent the double bond? The double bond will just be drawn as a parallel line to where it is located. So since it's between the third and the fourth carbon, that means you draw a parallel, parallel line in that area, okay? And for the ring, the aromatic ring, if it's um, a hexagon, this is what we call a benzene ring, actually. If it's a hexagon with alternating double bond because of um, hybridization and also resonance structure, the alternating double bond can be drawn as just a circle in the inside the hexagon structure. So that circle represents your alternating double bond. But you may, you may choose not to draw a circle. You may still opt to just make use of a parallel line to represent the double bonds. So either the circle or the alternating double or parallel line to the points of the hexagon structure. So that's your line structure. Okay, so don't forget we have chemical formula or molecular formula, condensed structural formula in which you fuse carbon to hydrogen, and then structural formula in which carbon to hydrogen's bond are very clear because there's line extended or expanded through it. And then line structure is the minimalist, simplistic design of your organic compounds in which every point represents your carbon. And if it's not carbon, it's going to be written in that point. So don't worry if it's not carbon because it's going to be written. But if there's nothing written, it's just purely connected lines. That means it's just carbon. And then the surrounding atoms are always your hydrogen. Okay, so let me end with this. This is an example of an expanded, condensed, and skeletal structure. So skeletal or line structure, that means the same thing. So this is how it looks like when you have expanded. So you see that the first carbon is here, that's a CH3. And then the second carbon is a CH, which branches out to CH3. The third carbon is a CH, branches out to CH2, CH3, which is this. And then CH2, the next, CH2, and then CH3. In which this is the equivalent condensed structural formula. And this is the equivalent um, skeletal structure. So that's it for now. Please copy this and please study more and have more exercises.
Bye for now!